Hello and welcome to Dining with Death, where we discuss infamous cases of death and murder that have an element of food to them, and then we cook or sample the food from the case. I'm Stacy Lee. Let's begin. One of the things I love the most about California is the street culture, and the night street culture in particular. Whether it's the Little Weekend Market on Fisherman's Wharf or the Los Feliz Street Fair in LA, the Santa Monica Festival, the Adams Avenue Street Fair in San Diego, there is just a great culture of nighttime street festivals all along the coast, and I always have a great time when I go. Part of many of those street fairs is the car culture and the bike culture. It's very common to have these street fairs start around 5 or 6 in the evening and then once the kids have bought their trinkets and had their ice cream, the adults start to gather around 8 o'clock or so. People who might be into a certain type of car or a certain type of motorcycle have their group of friends and those groups have these meeting spots that they like to gather and you can almost always see them hanging out at the street fairs. I have been to a lot of these kind of events and I have never seen any kind of violence erupt. They're just people that like to gather, they like to look at each other's machines and talk about their machines and drive their machines around and turn the stereos up really loud. They're really just people there to have a good time and to enjoy each other's company and to talk about the thing they all have in common. But we are true crime people and we know better than most people that there's always got to be somebody that ruins everything, right? It doesn't matter what you're into. It doesn't matter what group you consider yourself a part of. There's always somebody that acts up. Every culture, every race, every subculture, every group, everybody has one person that has to ruin it for everybody. It's just the way that it is, you know, and the rest of us are kind of left to clean up the mess and deal with it afterwards. Sadly, that's exactly what we're talking about here today. Neptune's Net is this famous little roadside spot in Malibu, California. I have not ever eaten there and I'm kind of embarrassed. No, I'm really embarrassed to even say how I know about this place. It wasn't because of this murder. I knew about this place before then. It's where Jackson and Brittany got engaged on Vanderpump Rules. I know, I know, but I do love a good trash TV show and I learned that on that show and I'm so sad to admit that. So anyway... That's definitely not what this spot is famous for. It's famous for its great beach views and the quick but delicious seafood and burgers it serves. And it's famous as being a biker hangout. It's not a rough biker bar, but bikers do gather there. Car enthusiasts also like this spot and use it as a meeting place. Like I said, they gather to meet up before driving their cars along the coastal highways and kind of get together, grab a bite to eat. It's a spot for these like-minded people who are into the same things to meet and to show off their vehicles before they go for a ride together. Unfortunately, one night during these meetups, violence broke out and the result of that violence changed many lives forever. On June 22nd, 2019, a group of car enthusiasts met in the parking lot around 10.30 after the restaurant had closed. There were about 30 people at the gathering. This was a regular event and these people knew each other. If not personally, a lot of them knew each other from seeing them around at these meetups. On this particular night, there were two men present that had existing issues between them. 30-year-old David Maldonado of Ontario, California, and Omar Pieras, a 23-year-old man from La Puente, saw each other at the gathering and tensions began to rise. I couldn't find any information on what the source of the original disagreement was, but suffice it to say these two guys didn't like each other. There at this meetup, in the parking lot of this historic restaurant, these two guys began to argue. Words were exchanged and then they would go their separate ways as people around them tried to, you know, calm them down, but the two men couldn't let it go. They got into each other's faces and before long, they were in a physical fight. If there's one thing I've learned from performing in clubs and bars for decades, it's that fights don't look anything in real life like they look in the movies or on TV. 90% of fist fights are, you know, two guys yelling at each other, one guy takes a swing, the other guy goes low, grabs him around the waist, and they go down on the floor, and then people break it up. That's 90% of fist fights, in my opinion. And unfortunately for me, I've seen plenty of them. 
Once in a while, you'll get a fight where somebody really lands a punch and knocks the other guy out, but for the most part, it's a wrestling match. But physical fights change when someone brings out a weapon. If you're going to fight, fight, but it seems a little unfair if one person has a weapon and one doesn't. That's exactly what happened here. Daniel Maldonado pulled out a knife during the fight. He went at Omar with that knife and stabbed him repeatedly. One of the wounds was a slash on Omar's throat that resulted in a massive amount of blood loss. Onlookers were shocked to see this fist fight turn into such a violent event. Omar went down and immediately people knew he was very seriously wounded. He lay there in the parking lot bleeding profusely. Several people that witnessed the stabbing called 911 and soon sheriff's deputies, California Department of Parks and Recreation officers and Ventura County firefighter paramedics responded to their calls. Paramedics worked on Omar Payeras and employed life-saving techniques to try and stabilize him so he could be transported by ambulance, but there was nothing they could do. The blood loss was too severe and the damage was too extensive. Omar Payeras died there in the parking lot of the restaurant. The man wielding the knife, Daniel Maldonado, was detained at the scene of the stabbing. As the forensics team arrived on the scene, Maldonado was released pending the investigation, but just hours later, on June 23, 2019, Daniel Maldonado was arrested for the murder of Omar Payeras. His bail was set at $510,000. He posted bail and was released just hours after his arrest. 23-year-old man stabbed and killed outside a popular Malibu restaurant. It happened in the parking lot of Neptune's Net on Pacific Coast Highway just before 11 o'clock last night. An argument between two car enthusiasts escalated into a physical altercation. Police say that's when 30-year-old Daniel Maldonado of Ontario stabbed the victim several times. That man from La Puente died at the scene. Maldonado has been arrested on suspicion of murder. He's now being held on half a million dollars bail. The investigation into the stabbings continued for several months. The police spoke with witnesses and reviewed the forensics, and in October of 2019, released a statement to the press stating that the district attorney was opting not to file charges against Daniel Maldonado. The prosecutor cited the possibility of self-defense as the reason they decided not to press charges. Now, I wasn't there. I didn't see what happened, obviously, but it does seem a little strange to me that one man had a knife and one man ended up dead and it wasn't the one who had the knife. Maybe Omar kept coming at Daniel Maldonado. Maybe witnesses saw that he had to defend himself in some way. I don't know. In this case, no one was sent to jail for the murder of Omar Payeras. His family was left to mourn his death. And I think it's safe to say Daniel Maldonado's life changed that night too. It's just another sad statistic, an act of violence that probably lasted less than a minute and changed a lot of people forever. I've talked about this here before. I know a lot of us like to talk about the big cases, the famous cases, but it's also important that we remember people like this. Even though no one was convicted, no one was ever sent to jail, somebody died that night. I would assume there will always be violence. I don't know, there's always been violence, but it's sad that you can go to something like a meetup and have that be your last night on earth. Honestly, because I wasn't there, I'm not one to judge and my heart goes out to everyone that was there and that witnessed this act and my heart goes out to the family of the people who lost someone. Now, as we always do on this playlist, the flagship playlist of this channel, Dining with Death, we discuss the place where the event happened. We talk a little bit about it and then we cook or sample the food from that place. That's what this playlist is. Death and dining. Dining with death. Neptune's Net has been designated as a historical landmark in California. The restaurant was opened in 1956 by a NASA aerodynamicist and engineer who retired from his career at NASA and moved to the beautiful coast of California. His name was Eastman N. Jacobs, but he went by Jake. He was apparently a brilliant man who contributed to major advances in aeronautics, including advances in airfoils and wind tunnels. This was an impressive guy and I would imagine that was a stressful career and he wanted to make a major change. He moved to Malibu and created this gorgeous little spot. Neptune's net became an instant hit with the locals and tourists alike. 
There are actually two menus at the restaurant, two different kitchens. There is the restaurant side, which has fried food and bottled and canned drinks. And there is the seafood side, which has fresh and live seafood and draft beer. Neptune's Net is famous for their fish and chips, and apparently the burgers are really good as well. Now this is California, so of course you know they have to have salads, and you can get them with ahi tuna, with salmon, or with mahi-mahi. They've also got grilled fish plates for those health-conscious Californians. They've got fried shrimp and fish tacos and seafood baskets, and you can put that into combos like calamari and shrimp or clams and fish. I am definitely going to make it a point to stop by this place if I find myself in Malibu in the future. It looks like a really fun spot. It's got great history and great food and fantastic views. Unfortunately, it's also the site that will forever be tied to this murder. Stay with me because right now we are going to make one of my very favorite things, crab cakes, as we go dining with death. We are ready to cook. I'm gonna show you how to make my crab cakes. They're the best and I love crab cakes so you know this version is gonna be good. It's really important when you're making crab cakes that you mix all the ingredients together and then add the crab. You don't wanna put the crab in first because by the time you stir it and mix it all together, you're gonna to break the crab up and we want those nice big pieces. We're gonna start with two eggs. We're gonna beat them really well so they're well incorporated. I've got two teaspoons of Worcestershire. I've got a quarter cup of mayonnaise and a big tablespoon of Dijon mustard. This is a quarter cup of finely chopped scallions. You want little tiny pieces, so get your good knife out and spend some time working on your knife skills. Same thing with the celery. You want little tiny pieces of celery, and again, a half a cup. I've got two teaspoons of finely chopped parsley, and it's fresh. This is a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of fresh black pepper. This is a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. This is a teaspoon of Old Bay. You gotta have your Old Bay. This is a cup of saltine crackers that I've just crushed up really fine. This will be your binding agent. Okay, let's mix this up really, really well. This is the base for our crab cakes. Now that we've got that really well mixed, we're going to fold in, gently fold in our crab. This is a pound of crab meat. This was about $38, so you wanna be careful when you're working with these high cost ingredients. You don't wanna end up with crab powder, <laughs> crab pieces. You want these nice big pieces. So just gently fold it in with the mix. We've got that really well combined and now we're going to form this into patties. Some people like their crab cakes really small, like a silver dollar. I don't like them like that, I like them bigger. <laughs> so they're not the size of a hamburger patty by any stretch, but they're a little bit bigger than you know the little tiny crab cakes you see for an appetizer. After you patty out each portion, you're gonna dredge it in breadcrumbs. And I'm using the Italian ones just because I like the seasoning that's included, but you can use old bread, crushed up, whatever you've got. There you go, nice little crab cake, all seasoned and dredged in breadcrumbs. You're gonna heat up a quarter cup of vegetable oil, and when it's nice and hot, you're gonna drop these down in just enough to sear the breadcrumbs and heat them all the way through. You don't wanna burn them, you don't wanna cook the crab anymore, it's already cooked. Look at these beautiful little things. I can't wait to try them. They're crispy on the outside, they're really tender on the inside. You have to really use that binding agent properly in order to get it to hold together because they are so delicate. But you don't wanna overcook them, you just wanna do a couple minutes on each side, enough to cook the egg, heat it through, and get that nice crisp crust. 
I've got a nice little remoulade sauce. It comes together very quickly, very easy, and the recipe will be on my website, diningwithdeath.com. But let's plate these up. What do you think? They look pretty good. Let's taste them. <laughs> nice little crunch. Get a little of that sauce. Mm-hmm. Those are so good. This celery is so nice in it because it gives that little earthy bite and also a little crunch. This sauce is a little bit spicy. It's got hot sauce in it. And the Creole seasoning is a little spicy too, so there's a kick. Yeah, you're gonna like these. Thank you for joining me today on Dining with Death. We made some seafood, food from Neptune's Net, which is a really great place that sadly had a really horrible event happen there. I sure appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. Hit the like button if you liked the video and make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you wanna see more from me. It really does help. Stay safe and be kind to each other and I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.